Eric Jamois, I'm a director of uh, business development for uh, Cheminformatics products at uh, Simulations Plus, and happy to be speaking to you here on the floor of uh, CHI Drug Discovery Chemistry. A very, and I think very simply as, a, as an experimental design tool. I mean, it's a, it's a tool for you know, testing hypotheses. So, I mean, if you have, you know, medicinal chemists always have multiple series of compounds in, in, in mind, and they, they, in most cases, wouldn't know which one should be privileged. Uh, and it's just really an excellent tool to, to build these molecules and then to see either at the individual compound level, but, but even at the, the entire chemotype level, um, what is more likely to, to, be, to be interesting and what has the least liabilities. Well, Admit Predictor has a, a plethora of models based on machine learning and artificial intelligence uh, capabilities for predicting all kinds of properties of chemicals and drugs, such as solubility, toxicity, metabolism, uh, PKA, and so on. In addition, people can use those capabilities to build their own models from their own data sets or from combinations of their data and literature data to build machine learning or artificial intelligence models. The fact that uh, models develop using public compounds don't necessarily work in uh, pharmaceutical industry. They have a very specific much more complicated chemical compounds that simply public domain doesn't cover. And it, it's a legitimate problem. Well, the auto model is taking our off the shelf and extending it to the customer's chemical space. This is what we did with the PKA model. We combined public data with their compounds. We built a PKA model that wins international competitions. So among the new features, we've also we've added new models for metabolism, aldehyde oxidase. Uh, we now predict UGT, sites of metabolism. So we've augmented our metabolism models with new kinds of metabolizing enzymes that can further uh, fill in all the different ways a molecule could be metabolized in the body. Uh, we've added in a new feature called structural sensitivity analysis which enables you uh, to identify what regions of a molecule are most important, most responsible for either uh, improving or degrading a given property, uh, like what, what makes the molecules lock P get bigger or smaller based on certain regions of the molecule that you can then flag for where do I want to change this, the molecule to either increase its lock P, for example, or lower its lock P. For example, and we've also added a new feature in many of our model predictions and also in, in our modeler um, software for estimating what we call regression uncertainty, the uh, associated uncertainty with a prediction. So it gives you the ability for, on an individual prediction basis, whether we think likely error in that prediction is likely to be big or small. So it, it, it can be used to give you some level of confidence in how sure are we when we're predicting a property of a molecule, that how accurate do we think we are likely to be in predicting that property uh, on an individual compound basis, which is fairly unique and our, our approach is quite novel and we're very proud of this new feature. Next step is easy. Just just test it for yourself. I mean, it's it's research. I think you know everybody. Everybody's in research is curious, right? I mean, you want to test it, see it, see how it works on your particular types of mo molecules. You know, everybody, a lot of people when it work in different areas of research. So it's you know again, look look at it and see how it can apply to your cases.